pass with the basketball. All right, here comes the Bruins now. They lead by 11. Saturday, 3 o'clock here at Pauley. It's going to be Arizona State. A big game for the Bruins, a must game for them. If they get by the Wildcats, it'll be a big game. Yeah, they oh, could wrap up the Pac-10. To be correct this for a lot of people is the reason why it's a big game for the Bruins is the fact that they have to win their game in order to win the conference. Now, they're going to go to the playoffs regardless if they win or lose. But it's definitely important for them to win because I I think the first team gets a bye. They may not have to play a team. You're right. That foul there was on Haskin. Look at that no look pass by Day. And Fields cannot convert it, but Day gets the bouncing ball. And Brad Wright, I believe, with the basket, and you heard the shout afterwards. Well, they're giving it to Kenny Fields. Oh, they are? They're giving it to Fields. Boy. Wright came out of there with his hand in the air like he had done it. What a play. Maybe we can take a look at that the next time the ball is dead. Somebody screamed under the basket. Oh, like thought animals. I thought I was right. <laughs> Turnover by the Wildcats. And that is their ninth of the ball game. Bruins 39, Arizona 26. Arizona remains in their man-to-man -man defense. They can't play the Bruins man-to-man. -man. There's Brad Wright. Nice pass by Jackson. And look at Brad smile. Boy, he's a happy human being, isn't he? Oh, he is. He's averaged about six and a half points ever since he began playing for Stuart Gray about a month ago. He has seven points tonight. Rockhorse not there. Day with a rebound. Throws it away. And he threw it to Fields, who was not looking. Luckily, oh, they nice get it back, pass. and Jackson scores. Pretty play by Kenny Fields. He definitely showed unselfishness in that situation. He could have taken it himself, but Ralph Jackson a step ahead of him. He chose to give it to Jackson, his this buddy. must be Pauley Pavilion. Jackson steals another. Goes by Brunkhorst, who gave up. He's got three fouls, and Arizona wants a timeout, and they need one. 17-49 as Jackson scores his ninth point, and the Bruins with a 45-26 lead. Here we go now, Arizona with the basketball. Number 24, David Haskin inbounds it to Brunkhorst, who's playing with three fouls. 45-26, UCLA. Well, ben Lindsay, the Wildcats coach, just called the timeout. I'm sure he doesn't know what to do in order to get his team back into the game. They're definitely not playing the way he wants them to play offensively. Well, he can't go home. He has to play SC on Saturday. I know he wished the season was over sooner. Boy, I'll say. Brunkhorst with a nice pass to Smith. Shot is blocked by Day, I believe. Might have been right. Lindsay wants a foul. Smith just puts it up. And meanwhile, Wright got hit in the mouth by a flying elbow. The right's tough. Oh, good defense by the Wildcats. Brockhorst knocks it out of bounds. Oh, they de denied the ball to, the uh, to Ralph Jackson, who was coming off the double stack very well. Kenny Fields did a good job by not trying to throw that ball over to him. Foster. That one had two points written all over it. Eight points for Foster. In league play, he's averaging 14.7. Brockhorst. Foster's definitely improved his defense. He wasn't known as being a very good defensive player when he when he's a freshman, but he's definitely improved it now. Foul on 31, Frank Smith. Frank Smith says, Booker, come on. Frank, second personal, second team foul on Arizona. Remember Ben Lindsay in Arizona when he walked down the court? I wonder if he'll do it tonight. <laughs> I don't know if he'll do it at Pauley. At down in Arizona, what we're talking about. A call went against him. It was on the other end of the court. He just simply walked out by the free throw line and stood there as the teams ran down. He was great. Oh, beautiful move by that man, Darren Day. 49, 28, UCLA Day with nine points. Boy, he nailed Morgan Taylor to the floor. Put this Wilson not there. And I guess it's tipped in by, looked like in by Frank, Smith. Frank Smith. That's who they give it to. So Smith now with eight points. Right, top of the key. And the reason why the Wildcats can't play the Bruins man to man because physically they're not as strong as the Bruins in the front line. Hey, Fields with 16 points now. He's having himself another fine game. Oh, he is. Nice story on Kenny in the LA Times earlier this week on Monday. Blocked by Wright, foul on Wright. Not a bad play by Wright. Showed a lot of aggressiveness on the play. 
Let's take a look at it again. Nice pass inside to Frank Smith. May have hooked Brad Wright a little bit. It's a foul. Second personal Two on shot. Bradley. Two shots for Smith. First team foul on UCLA. They only had five in the first half. Frank Smith, 61% from the line. Averaging just over seven rebounds as well. Bruin basketball also brought to you by the makers of Texaco Super Unleaded Gasoline. This higher octane helps knock out the knocks. Frank now four for four from the line. And I think we told you earlier, Arizona, the poorest free throw shooting team in the conference. Darren Day with a nice save. Boy, the Bruins got a big break on that play. It looks like the Wildcats are finally going to a zone, which is what I expected them to do. They just can't play the Bruins man-to-man. -man. Physically, they're not as strong. And there's the zone breaker. Rod Foster with 10 points, 53-32 Bruins. Front course, trying to get it to Smith and just threw it away. That's a tough pass to make through the legs of a couple of uh, opponents. And Lindsay stands up and talks to Brunkhorst, kind of an animated fashion. Well, it's not much he can say to his players now because I'm sure they're down mentally about the mistakes that they've been making during the course of the year. And the fact that they're only 1-15 in, in conference doesn't make them feel better as a player. What a pretty shot by Kenny Fields. Textbook jump shot. He has 18 points. That is one above his conference average. Remember, he is the Pac-10 Player of the Year as voted today. And we congratulate that fine young athlete. Punches Wilson. Boy, he can't make anything. Ralph Jackson, another rebound. And the assist, maybe. Brad Wright puts it up. A little too hard. And Day fighting for the ball, and he scores it. Boy, Darren Day is on his NBA year. He oh, is he gonna is. be, he's gonna make some NBA team very, very happy. And the Bruins are playing tonight just like they did Thursday night against Washington, where they overpowered the Huskies Thursday night by out rebounding. Outlet pass today, showtime for Kenny Fields. Kenny Fields says he loves to slam. He gets more satisfaction out of a slam than anything else. Boy, and he loves it when the crowd stands up. And tonight, they're standing for that. Well, they were standing when he caught the basketball, and he was 20 feet away from the basket. They knew it. <laughs> there it is, showtime by Kenny Fields. He brings the crowd to his feet. Nice cuff dunk. That's the same dunk he was trying to, he was gonna try the first half. 20 points for Fields. 59-32, it's becoming a rout. Although it didn't begin this way, the Bruins trail 12-4 early. And then went on a scoring binge. Morgan Taylor hits the backboard. Outlet pass to Holton. He can slam too. Watch it, fellas. And a foul on Brunkhorst. That's his fourth. Like I was saying earlier, Joe, the Bruins are playing the same way they did last Thursday night against the Huskies, where they overpowered them, outmatched them. There's Michael Holton going for the ball, being fouled. But the game Saturday is the big game for him. Physically, Arizona State is a lot tougher team than Arizona is. So that'll be a bigger test for him, where they were definitely out muscled Monday night against the Cougars. Number 14 was Ken Enser. He's in there in place of Brock Brunkhorst, who has four fouls. 59-32, Bruins. Jackson. Ralph Jackson doing a good job penetrating through the 2-3 zone. The gaps are wide open. Morgan Taylor working his way inside. Jackson, that's comical. Jackson had his hands on the ball. Morgan Taylor just pulled it away and turned around for the jumper. He now has 10 points, and it's 61-34 Bruins. I know how the players on the Wildcat teams feel. The fact that... Oh, look at that pass oh. by Fields to right, and he cannot score it. Front course. Uh, beg your pardon. Uh, Belabradic, John Belabradic with a foul. That is two on Belabradic. Like I was saying, I, I understand how the Wildcat players feel. It's a nice pass by Kenny Fields inside to Brad Wright, wide open. Put Belabradic in the air, and there's the foul. UCLA has outscored the Wildcats 24 to 8 in this half so far. And Larry Farmer breathing a bit easier. 
You never know how your team's going to react after a very emotional loss. Kevin O'Connor. Yep. Very talented brain trust, along with Craig Implement. And here comes Gary Melanson in place of Gary Wright. Wright is only a 53% free throw shooter, but he made two there. He is three for four from the line tonight, leaves with nine points, and now Melanson gets some playing time, and we should see a little bit of Stuart Gray as well in the second half. We may see a little bit of everyone tonight. Oh, but Randy Ariaga, who has the flu, he's not in uniform tonight. Randy finishing up his fourth year at UCLA. Like I was saying earlier, I know how the players feel because when I was at Detroit, we only won 16 games out of 82, so I know how it feels to be in the cellar. <laughs> Troy Cooks misses, rebounded by Holton. Darren Day would love to shoot, but bounces one off his knee and gives it up to Holton. Weak side to Kenny Fields. One-on-one -on -one with Taylor. Alley-oop to Jackson! Oh! Those two guys who are the best of friends give UCLA a 65-34 lead. Now who says Kenny Fields can't pass? That's right. <laughs> 13 points for Jackson. And they're off and running. What else? Holton wants to oh, go all the way and down. Basket is good and he's fouled and he's also knocked out his wallet. Foul on number 55, John Bellabradic. Boy, it's definitely showtime here at Pauley Pavilion tonight. Nice wraparound behind the back move by Michael Holton. Well, when you're leading by, what, 24 points? I guess you're going to have some showtime. No, make it 33 points. Bruins have outscored him 30 to 8 in the second half. Holy mackerel. We still got 11 minutes to go. You want to play? And my uniform is in my, in my bag. I think you can play tonight. <laughs> I can't, but you can. Holton. I guess I'll, I'll use Randy's uniform because he's wearing my number. That's right. <laughs> ah. I tell you, you'd get a big cheer from the crowd. Uh-oh. Answer falls down. Pass to Holton. Not there. Oh, Melanson almost slapped it in. Well, the Bruins can do whatever they want to on both ends of the court. Nigel Miguel. Morgan Taylor with the ball inside, and he's fouled by Melanza. Well, it's good to see Morgan Taylor not to give up in a situation like this. First foul on Melanza. Here's Morgan Taylor, probably one of the most aggressive players in the Wildcats team this year, not trying to be denied on the offensive end. Here's Morgan Taylor, 66% from the line. UCLA basketball is also sponsored in part by the makers of Toyota Cars and Trucks to remind you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. So get the feeling whenever you drive. Another reminder, Saturday at 3 p.m., Arizona State will be here to play UCLA. KTLA will have that game at 8 o'clock Saturday night. UCLA and Arizona State, 8 o'clock Saturday on KTLA. Good hustle by the Wildcats. Alley oop, not there. And a foul. Kenny Fields is instructing Michael Holton as to where to place the ball. Said so next time, give it to me a little bit more here. Over to the right a little bit, Michael. Here it is, Come on. Here. Kenny almost got it anyway. Fouls on number 33, Todd Porter. And a timeout called by Ben Lindsay and the Arizona Wildcats. 11.20 left to go in the ball game. Kenny Fields will be at the line shooting for UCLA. Kenny, 58% from that point. Tonight, he is two of five. What a pretty song, girls. Yeah, I know you You know them rather well, don't you? No, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm, just try, I'm just trying to get you in trouble with Terrence. All right, Kenny now three of six from the line. And that gives the Bruins a 70-36 lead. They lead by 34 points. My goodness. 11-16 left to go in the ball game. Ken Enser. Well, they keep taking shots like that. They'll be down even more yeah. than that. They deserve what they're getting, I guess. Holton, not there. Nigel. Look at the arms and legs, and Holton says, let's put a stop to this and slow it down Boy, just a bit. Are they rebounding? Now, the Arizona players are not even blocking out. The Bruins just... You can just walk over and, and get a rebound if you want to. Jackson off balance. 
and Nigel gets the shot, and he's fouled by Bella Bradick, I believe. Hang on, we'll give you the name of the fouler. Yep. 55, Bella Bradick, that is four on Bella Bradick. So he has four, Brock Brunkhorst has four, and Nigel Miguel at the line. There's some pretty fair basketball talent right there. Oh, yeah. Larry Farmer at his prime. There's a picture of Larry Farmer in the program. He looked so skinny when he was I a player. I can't believe it. Huh? Yeah, he played forward. In fact, he's, he's, he's on the picture with Bill Walton. Bill Walton. They looked like a couple of prisoners of war. <laughs> he had a phenomenal record here at UCLA when he played 89 and 1. Yeah. Number 35 of the ballgame, Donald Mellon for Arizona. He replaces number 44, Morgan Taylor. Morgan, when he played against the Bruins in Tucson, there he is, had 26 points. Tonight, he has not played very well at all. He has 12. Well, comparatively speaking, Compared, yes. 12 isn't bad. Another offensive rebound. 33 with a rebound, Todd Porter. And here comes 34, Harvey Thompson. First time we've seen Thompson in the ball game. The 6'4 junior from Tucson. Nice move by Porter. And Melanche finally picks it out of the air. Off to Holton. Nigel Miguel will back it up and slow it down just a bit. Good judgment by Nigel Miguel. 72-36 UCLA. 10 minutes, 15 seconds left to go in the ball game. Nigel, oh, behind the back pass. Kenny Fields puts it away. I don't know if Coach Farmer liked that pass, but it definitely led to an assist. <laughs> what are you going to say to the guy? 24 points for Field. Cold shot. No good. And Melanchon had the ball taken away by Bella Bradick. Almost tipped in by Mellon. And now the rebound taken by Foster. There's Nige. Long shot. Not there. And he gets it back from Holton and puts it in. Holy mackerel. The Bruins can't do anything wrong, and they are getting more than one shot at their own basket. That's what's important. You have to get the extra shot. The so spread is 40 points. And we still have a little over nine minutes to go. This is the ultimate challenge for the sportscaster. <laughs> Celebrating. <laughs> And Melanchon with another rebound. He has four in the game so far. That's off the bench. Foster just may go all the way. It's an even bigger challenge for the Wildcats. Yes. That looked like Magic Johnson, although it was Michael Holton to Nigel Miguel. What a great pass by Holton. And the Wildcats had no clue. And the Wildcats have just given up on defense. You know how many points the Wildcats have scored the second half? Let me guess. Eight? Eight points. UCLA has outscored them 41 to 8. And here comes Stuart Gray and Darren Day back of the ball game. The Kennedy High School connection. Nice move by Todd Porter. I thought he might have traveled. Foul is on Gary Melanchon. He was one of the top 30 high school players in the nation last year, as voted by Street and Smith magazine. Very good athlete, I am told. Basketball, track, all American in high school. Good camera work by the crew. Well, they've done it all year long, haven't they? Oh, they have. Nice work, fellas. Jim Kane, our director tonight. Joe Quasarano has been with us most of the year. Aaron Day, turn around, put it up, and in. The crowd didn't react to that basket. <laughs> they weren't sure. <laughs> now they say that. Yeah, now they get the indication that the basket is good, so they applaud, and the foul is called on Arizona. Darren Day will be back at the free throw line. Darren Day, what a three tonight. Now he is two of four, 81-37 the Bruins. Well, they should easily get to 100 tonight, don't you think? Oh, I think so. Now, Coach Farmer is even, even a more difficult situation where he doesn't want to embarrass the Wildcats, but he has to keep his players out there because the playoffs are right around the corner. Oh, yeah. How do you tell them not to play aggressively? And how can you substitute? Nigel Miguel coming off the big game at Washington on Thursday night. I wish we had a shot of the smile on Nigel's face. <laughs> Don Mellon with the basket from the baseline, 83-39. Foster going all the way. He has it on his hip, and he's lucky because he gets fouled. 
Usually bounces five times. Three, four. Oh, ah. He may miss it. I think you missed the bounce. Huh? I think I missed the bounce. Yeah. Right? yeah. Six Not time that. on a second free throw. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's count them. 84 39. He, there's one. He snuck one in. Yeah. Two, three, four, one more. Five. That's it. Okay. Now shoot it. And please make it. Good. <laughs> Every time I talk about a guy at the line, I jinx him. 85 39 Bruins. 7 45 left to go in the ball game. Arizona State here on Saturday afternoon at 3. Oh, shit. That foul by Harvey Thompson. Or that shot by Harvey Thompson. Now he's fouled by Stuart Gray. Stuart Gray in the wrong place. The line. His first free throw of the night is good. Listen to these numbers handed me by our crack statistician, Rick Weinstein. I mean track. <laughs> UCLA has out-rebounded Arizona 20 to 5 in the second half. Outscored them 48 to 12. Oh, nice move by Todd Porter. And a foul on number 20. Bruin basketball is also brought to you by Airborne Overnight, the only Air Express company that says we're shooting for 100% on-time delivery. Here's Nige at the line. Sophomore out of Notre Dame High School in Sherman Oaks. Nige is going to have to improve his free throw shooting. The Bruins have dropped back into a 2 3 zone. Hot quarter. Ray with a rebound. I believe that his first rebound, and the fans love it. Oh, they definitely love Stuart Gray. Tell you, they could have used him at Washington State. He moves bodies around, and that's what the Bruins needed up there. Especially against the Cougars, you said it, because they are a very physical team. Curtis Knight, make one. Curtis, he made a nice one up at Washington. Oh, he did. Here comes Harvey Thompson. Todd Porter with some alley-oop. Might as well. It's 85-40. Something's got to work. Holton all the way down, lays it up easily. 87-40 UCLA. I don't even think anyone saw Michael Holton come by. Nine points for Mike. I tell you what about Ben Lindsay, the first-year coach at Arizona. He's a good coach. He just needs some players. And that is not a knock on the Arizona players necessarily. Foul on Gray. Look, he got looked like he got all ball, but he's called for the foul. And I think he came aboard late. He did. And that he didn't get an opportunity your recruiting. to recruit anyone. No. So he doesn't have this type of players. And there's Ben right there. Nice man. 16 years at Grand Canyon College, had a record of 317, 137, and two NAIA titles. So look at Stuart Gray change in. Yeah, I guess that knee's okay. He was the first throwing down the floor. Oh, he was. It's good to see him back in uniform. Again. Yeah, it really is. All right, Holton will inbound the ball. Goes to Curtis Knight. Outside to Melanson. Even further outside to Nigel Miguel. Arizona in that 2-3 zone defense. They haven't employed that all night long. They tried to run with the Bruins and got blown away. Tried to stay in the man-to-man -man defense a little too long, I thought. Inside the gray. He'll turn and shoot and make it! Yeah! 89-41 <laughs> UCLA. Bruins by 48 points. Boy, this is a big game for Stuart Gray because he's testing his physical stamina a little bit. Harvey Thompson with the basket from the top of the key, 89-43. 5.52 left to go in the ball game. He hasn't lost his confidence on any offensive end either. He caught the ball right off the pass, turned and took it a nice little jumper. And didn't put it on the floor. Which is the key, especially for him. Holton, trying to work something going, trying to get a lane open somewhere. Arizona now. Back in a man to man, looks like. Stuart Gray stole it, lost it, and is fouled. So he'll get to go to the line, I believe. I thought the officials might call traveling because as soon as he threw the ball up, maybe it was deflected by one of the Arizona players. 13, that's 56%. He's really worked hard on this aspect of his game. He listens to the crowd when he does something. <laughs> he loves it. Boy, I tell you, that Stuart, that is music to his ears. Tickets for the for the NCAA Western Regionals for women's basketball to be held in Pauley Pavilion March 24th and the 26th are available now at all Ticketron outlets and UCLA Central Ticket Office. Boy, I'm happy for Stuart Gray. 91-43 Bruins. And let's uh, congratulate Ducky Drake as well for getting Stuart back in action. Well, I knew Ducky Drake would. He's an excellent trainer. 
Yucky, a newlywed, about a month ago, two months ago. Where everyone's cheering for them to throw the ball into Stuart Gray. Oh, my! 93-45, <laughs> and what a pass. It wasn't a great pass because it wasn't at the right spot. Right. Michael Holton, such a good athlete, was able to catch it and glide it in. Roy Cook, Gray with a rebound. Nigel gonna slam oh. it. No, nobody can. Holton lost the handle. Mellon lets the ball go out of bounds. Turnover, Arizona. But it's important for Stuart Gray. Oh, yeah. Bruins will win their 15th in Pac-10 play. Bruins doing a good job on the offense, being very patient. Dude, this is it off. They wanted him to shoot with the ball. Harvey Thompson, he'll go all the way, and he's fouled by Holton, and the basket is good. Thompson makes it a three-point play, 93-48 Bruins. Four minutes left to go in the ball game. Now the students are asking for 100 points. <laughs> They're asking for a lot. <laughs> now, number 35, Donald Mellon, eyes with a one-on-one -on -one situation. Let's see if Nice can make a free throw tonight. Oh, good. We talked to Nigel at, after the Washington game. He's, that, he's a very quiet young man. Oh, he's he's very a tough quiet. interview. He's a very tough interview. He's a challenge. He has yes and no down very well. But I, I've seen him on the bus to and from games. He can, he can talk. He can have some fun. But in front of a camera, why he's a little reticent. Maybe a little shy. But his game is definitely coming around, which is important for the Bruins in the playoffs. They need that experience and spark plug off the bench. Donald Mellon. Oh, my, what a block. Goaltending on Gary Melanson, who can't understand the call. The reason why Gary blocked that, he was standing under the basket, and the shot was taken from away from the basket. There's Gary right there, 53. See yep. where he's standing. That's why you can't block a shot from there. Good call by Booker Turner. 95-48 Bruins, 3.30 left to go. Curtis Knight, shoot it up. Not there. Melanson with a rebound and has it taken away. Looks like we're playing a little soccer. Looks like one and one in the courtyard. Oh. Nigel Miguel. Ten points for Nigel. Nigel at the right place at the right time. Donald Mellon, and he gets a slam of his own. 97-52. He says Stuart Gray won't block this one. Mellon with four points tonight. Melanson baseline. That's his shot. 99-52. Still get 100? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> two and a half minutes to go. Stolen by Porter. This could be it. Holton going for the century mark, and he's fouled. All right, here's Holton for 100. <laughs> My goodness, you think you just won the presidency. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Farmer's <laughs> glad to be out That's of Pullman. Right. Now I know why they're yelling and screaming. They get free food after the oh, ball game. Oh, I knew there was a catch to it. They get 100, they get free food. Anybody who goes into a certain establishment with a ticket from the game, it's a burger. Nigel just came over here and says, Roy, I'm going to get a burger, too. <laughs> <laughs> 34. That's Harvey Thompson not there. But Mellon in the lane, and he scores again. That's a good move by Mellon. 101-54. Turnover by the Bruins. Here comes Thompson. And 52 with the jump hook. That's Greg Taylor. By running the offense, because most times... Get it here. Oh, too bad on the alley -oop. He had right before his, his injury. Alonso. Pass goes to Holton. Oh. Last tonight. He's got a score. Yeah. Good. Going Gray. Give it to. Go time. 111.58. Four seconds to go. UCLA 
Philly 111. Arizona 58. The Bruins with a new Pauley Pavilion record for most points in one half, 74. We'll be back with our post-game guest in a moment.